there's pressuring you out in the open. And so they're proposing to take that right away. We see in healthcare that they want to encroach upon the ability of individuals and families to make healthcare decisions for themselves. They want to take more and more and more of that decision making over into the federal government. You see them come into power saying that they're the party of the poor and the disadvantaged, and yet one of the first things they do the first six months into office is come into Washington, D.C. and abolish the scholarships for poor children in this school district who had a chance to flee a failing school district. Now those are troubling signs, but they represent something else. They represent a suffocation, an encroachment onto our freedoms and our liberties in every instance. And whether it's your privacy at the ballot box at work, whether it's your right to make a health care decision, whether it's your right to choose where you want your kids to go to school with the financial resources, and on down the list. And one last thing. We now have an administration that says to some of our best friends around the world, like Poland and the Czech Republic, you can't count on us. Even though we promised we'd stick with you, even though you stuck your necks out for us, even though you took a great risk, you never know when we might pull the rug out from underneath you. You got Lech Walesa saying, you know, you can't trust the United States. They're only out for themselves. So I hope you're concerned about those things. I know you are. But we also have to be more than just critics in chief of what's going on, on the other side. We have to articulate our own positive message moving forward. In Minnesota, you know, we're concerned also about government spending. In 150 years of that state's history, in two-year budget cycle to two-year budget cycle, we never, they never slowed down spending, never cut it in real terms once ever in 150 years until I became governor. Uh, we got the spending down to 2% a year on average during my time as governor. We've got market-based reforms moving forward in health care, got performance pay and education, a lot of other good stuff. But the, I'm not saying that to you because I'm bragging. In Minnesota, we try to be modest, but in the upper middle east. We have uh, 15,000 lakes, but we're saying we the land of 10,000 lakes because we don't want to accuse of overstating things. <laughs> but the point of it is, if we can do those kinds of things in Minnesota, we can do it anywhere. And so whether you're from New York or California or Maryland or some other places where they say, oh, Governor, it's tough. You know, it's tough as Republicans to move forward and make progress, get people elected. We can do it. We live in a great nation. It's filled with really good people. I don't buy into this notion that America is in decline, that somehow we have this uh, inspiration from the other side of the aisle, that America's place in the world needs to be you know, downgraded. This is a great country filled with really good people. And I'm... And planning to spend the next year and a half of my life finishing out my term as governor, helping the Republican Governors Association as vice chair get governors elected and re-elected, and you'll see the first returns on that effort by many in this room in Virginia and New Jersey in just a couple of weeks, and I think it's going to go well for us. And then we're going to move forward with this Freedom First Pack and try to convey this message across the country of the need to have a conservative movement, but one that is modern in its approach and modern in the way that we present uh, issues, with particular emphasis on trying to reach some people who are not yet Republicans. Before I close, I want to thank some people who have been incredible help